when predicting these playoffs, I picked that the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Memphis Grizzlies was going to be the most exciting first round series this year. And it would have been, but I felt like that Pelican Sun series was really fun watching the guy like B.I. Showing you guys that who I've been saying he was for the past few years, a superstar. Showing you guys down the big stage. I love that. Um, I love watching the young guys having a huge impact. And then I love that they actually stole two games and that no game was really a blowout. And it just got you excited for their future. And also watching Chris Ball and the Suns was pretty fun to watch. But after that series, this series was also one of the best. It would have been number one if both of these teams weren't just so dumb and young. It, it, it would have been number one. It got to a point where, like, they just do a lot of dumb stuff. And it just, as an NBA fan, it started to piss me off. More so the Timberwolves. Like, I'm going to tell you why it's more so the Timberwolves. But the Grizzlies themselves, they did a lot of dumb stuff this year. And it, it, it pissed me off a lot. Starting off with Jaron Jackson, he kind of took himself out of this series. Now they won today. I wrote most of these notes before the game today. But they won today. But before this game, Jaron Jackson basically took himself out of this whole series. Um, he's probably, what, the most paid person on this team because John didn't get his contract yet. And he played terribly. He was probably the fifth or the sixth best player this series. I say John Murray had a better series, of course. Desmond Bain was their best player this whole series. Brandon Clark probably the second best. And then John Morant, so that's three. Tyus Jones had a really good series. And Dylan Brooks, Kyle Anderson, they all had better series than Jaron Jackson Jr. Because Jaron Jackson Jr. was not on the floor at all. Because he couldn't stay out of foul trouble. And he has that whole Iguodala effect. And that's why it really pissed me off. Because he swear he's never made a foul in his life. Like, he does a lot of antics. He put his hands up like he never did never did anything. And it just pissing me off. Because literally, most of the foul calls were foul calls. Um, John Rand had a few good games. First game, it was decent. Even like you look at the 33, it sounds nice. It was decent. Um, last game, decent. But... Shout out to Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards did an amazing job on John Morant this whole series. Showed you guys why I said Anthony Edwards is by far the best player on this team. Because on both sides, you've elite. Elite. We haven't seen John Morant get crossed up. I mean, not crossed up. I'm sorry. That highlight in the background just, just messed me up. But we haven't seen John Morant get locked up his whole career. He was getting locked up this series. Pat Bev played a part in it. But it was mostly Anthony Edwards. Mostly Anthony Edwards locking him down this whole series. But, like I said, John Morant came out with the win. Um, John Morant, especially in the clutch, he showed up. But he wasn't the best player. Desmond Bain, he was pretty much perfect this whole series. Desmond Bain, who? The whole series. Guys like even Dylan Brooks doing taking dumb shots. It was one game. He took 20 shots. Only made like seven. Like, dumb stuff like that. It just, it got to a point where it started to piss me off. But then we got the Timberwolves. This series should have been over. It should have been 4-1 Timberwolves. But no... This team is so young, and they so fucking dumb. And I don't like to cuss in my videos, but I, I have to do it. This team is so fucking stupid. It makes me mad. I picked this team to win the, the series. And if I had to do it again, I would. But, like, just looking at this team, bro, they are so dumb. In one game, you, you blow two 20-point leads. Not just on the team. Coach, they're going on a 21-0 run, and you're not calling the timeout? But... The team, like, motherfucker, you can't score at all? And you blew two 20-point leads in one game? You let a team come back down four with four minutes left in the game. Three games. Three games you let them come back down four, down ten in four minutes left in the game. Three games. It just happened tonight. They just did it again. And all of this starts from the top. Yes, I said Anthony Edwards is the best player. But Anthony Edwards, he had... Probably like a 7 out of 10 series. It was okay. But I'm going to show you why he had a pretty much man series. D'Angelo Russell. We all know D'Angelo Russell has the talent to be a top 10 guard in this league. But the dude averaged 13 points on 33% shooting. That is terrible for a motherfucker that's a max player. Then we look at Andrew Wiggins. The guy you trade him for. He's over there hooping in the, in the Warriors. He's hooping. That looks like a bad trade now. Because D-Lo just played terrible. And I love D-Lo because the game is it's so smooth. But, like, he just doesn't. He don't got it. He don't. He just really lackadaisical. And it, it just looks weird. Then Cat. I love Cat. But, like, this, bro, his antics is serious. Was on some real young childish shit. Telling the crowd to be quiet when y'all up seven with eight minutes left. 
The fuck? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm talking about, oh, we in Minnesota now. And you blow another league. Like, what? This team is so young and they so dumb. I'm about to show you the highlights, but, man, this series, oh, my God. This series is so hard to watch because both of the teams are <laughs> very idiotic. Now, right here, we got Anthony Edwards on the switch. Xavier Tillman. You look at the clock. 11, 11 seconds left. It's a lot of space right there. Because if I'm not mistaken, that's Jay Vando. If, if Jared Allen, I mean, if Jared Jackson comes up, because that's an easy drive-by, right? You think that's an easy drive-by. If Jared Jackson comes up, that's an easy pass to Jay Vando. Because Jay Vando is one of the best cutters we have in the league. But, look what Anthony Edwards does. You know what we call this? You know what we call this in the basketball world? This is settling. You're taking a pull-up contested three in a close game, by the way. And I love Ant. In a close, he did this a lot on a close game. Like, what what kind of shot is that? That's that's a dumb shot. That is a dumb shot, bro. That is that's a dumb shot. Right here. Now this whole series, hold on, don't play, don't play. This whole series, what the Timberwolves did was they went after John Morant and exposed his defense. A lot of people would think John Morant is a good defender because he's very athletic. But this whole series, they exposed his defense. So right here, you got tie zones on you. Another person that can't guard you. 14 seconds left. Let me let the play develop. Look at all the space he has. You drive, kick to the best three-point shooter of all time. I'm exaggerating, by the way. But, yeah, you kick the helm. But look what he does when we have Anthony Edwards, one of the best drivers we have in this league, on one of the worst defenders we have in this league. And look what Ant does. Look what he does. And in close game, by the way, they was coming back at this time. They were coming back again at this time. In the close game. But look what Ant does. A fucking pull-up three. Yes, two in and outs. Cool. It's a miss. A pull-up three when this whole series... You had Pat Bev dogging him, dogging him, and you're way more talented than Pat Bev, and you pull up for a pull up three? And I love it, but I'm not a biased motherfucker. This is terrible. It's terrible. Now, again, this comes with learning and stuff, and it might seem simple for me, especially watching the film, but I understand that this is first playoff series, but stuff like this can't happen. You get the switch. And you do what I told you to do. Not what I told you to do, but what we all want you to do. You drive, because John Moran can't stick you. Drive past him easily. Easily. Now, he has to commit. He, Him committing, that should be an easy pass to Jaden McDaniels. An easy pass. But look what he tries to throw up. A floater. Great defense by Brandon Carr. Great rotations by Brandon Carr. But if you give that pass to Jaden McDaniels, that's even a kick out to him because he has to come up. Or that's a kick out to him because he has to come up. Just stuff like that to add on to your game would have helped him out a lot. And would have helped him win this game. But they ended up losing this game. Um, and he had uh, he had some bad clutch moments. This is, this is a bad shot. That is a bad shot. And that was a great recovery by John Moran. Right here, this was the play out of the timeout. The play was for Cat to get open. And the play was for Cat to get an open island by himself where he can go to work. Because literally, we all know we like Jaron Jackson. But we know Jaron Jackson cannot stop Cat. So, you get the play you want. Oh, let me block this now. You get the play you want. Now he has, that, he has an island by himself. Why pick up the ball right there? He might be like, oh, this is a tight space. John Moran's there. You can easily just shade away, shade away from John Moran and keep your dribble. You can do that. I've seen Draymond do it plenty of times when they read the screen because Draymond Green is one of the best screeners. We have. I've seen Draymond do it plenty of times. One that's also on Pat Bev, too. This is also on Pat Bev. I don't know if this is the play. But you see Cat coming towards you. You know he's trying to get to an island. I would go baseline instead of going above him. But if you're going to go above him, keep your dribble up. Because now we, look what you got to do. Take a contested shot. A dumb shot at that. With 17 seconds left in the shot clock. That's a rush shot. That's a rush shot in the clutch. That's a terrible shot. A terrible shot. I can't express that, express that enough. That is a terrible shot. Now right here, you get a stop. You get a really good stop. And Cat was a big part of that stop. I believe this is the one where John Moran tried to force the ball up like three times. You get a stop. 
19 seconds. You're down by four. With two minutes left to go. And you shoot a 40 foot three, a 35 foot three. Yes, you one of the best three point shooters of all time, especially how big you are. But this is a dumb shot. This is an idiotic shot. And it just shows, like, I can use the, oh, he's young for Anthony Edwards. I can use that for Jaden McDaniels. I'm not using, oh, they're young. They don't got experience for Cat Carl Anthony Towns. I'm not using that for Pat Bev. I'm not using that for D'Lo. Because y'all are seven plus years into y'all career. This is an idiot. Hold on. This is an idiotic shot, bro. That just made me mad watching it again. You didn't have to force that. Look at that. 14, 13, 4 from 13, 8 and 10. He's having a bad game, but y'all lost this game. Cat, I'm going to be honest, John Moran hasn't had a good game this whole series. Lost six. And this is a big part of this. Idiotic stuff like this. Trying to play hero ball like that. That's just a dumb shot. Now, this is a shot y'all probably been waiting for me to come up, I mean, to talk about. Um, yeah, D'Lo, supposed to be one of the clutchest players we have in this league. At this moment, at this time, I was hype as hell. I kept saying to the TV, I was just talking, because this game was lit. I ain't gonna lie, this game was lit. And I was like, y'all, y'all gonna learn why they call him, um, why they say he got ice in his veins. And he does this. Now, D-Lo's been in the league for like five, six, seven years. It was around that time. I can honestly say, I've only seen D-Lo take a mid-range shot about a couple times, about like five times. But I've never seen him take a contested mid-range shot, especially when it's D-low time. It's normally a step back three, or, or he's just driving past you. A contested shot when you just got to stop on the other end. You just got to stop in the clutch time. You just got to stop with 15 seconds left, while also Brandon Clark is coming over. He's coming over. Why is that not a pass? D'Lo's one of the best four gen. Look at the contest. He's right there. I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he blocked that shot. Jalen McDaniels, one of your best three-point shooters. Why is he not getting the ball right there? Why are you not trusting in your teammates? You're supposed to be the leader of the team. The point guard of the team. You failed your team right here for taking this idiotic. If he would have made it, like on some Dame stuff, if he would have made it, I would have been like, that's a bad shot. Just like Paul George said, that's a bad shot. Because this is a terrible shot. You've never been known to take mid-range shots. You're going to take a mid-range contested shot late, early in a shot clock for what? You just you just sold the team the game. And you sold them a series because you shot 33% from the field and 28% from three. Averaging 13 points. You make it 32 million next year. Yeah, that's that sucks. Like I said, I understand the whole their young thing. But I only understand that for guys like Jared Vanderbilt, um, Anthony Edwards, Jaden McDaniels, uh, yeah, guys like that that haven't been in this moment. For, for guys like Cat, D'Angelo Russell, I I love Pat Bed, but that side step three last night pissed me off. I'm I can't use that excuse because y'all had experience. Y'all been in the league for seven plus years. Y'all had experience. That's just unacceptable. And like I said, I give a little leeway to the other guys because it's their first playoff moment. But if you look at them, they showed up the whole series. Anthony Edwards has by far been the best player in this series. Showing you guys why I said in freaking October he's the best player on this team. Jaden McDaniels, he was there. You put Jordan McLaughlin in, and he made impact instantly. More than D'Lo made the whole series. So stuff like that, man. I, ah, that's just <laughs> it. Pissed me off, man. I picked them in the beginning of the series to make this playoffs, and I'm happy. But now, like going into the all season, I think they got a lot of questions. All right, D'Angelo Russell and Jared Vanderbilt, the options at the two and the four. I like Jared Vanderbilt, but sometimes he can't get played off the floor because on offense he's really nothing. I don't. Th he doesn't have a shot, um, and they don't run a lot of pick and rolls for him to like be a lob threat. He's a lob threat himself, but they don't run a lot of pick and rolls to show that he's a lob threat like that. Like I said, D'Lo, I believe D'Lo averaged seventeen and seven this season, as in. A person that's getting paid max money, that's bad numbers. But you can't put that on D-Lo because they paid him that money. They wanted to. But that's terrible numbers. You got to explore your options. Are they the options at the one or the two? All right, that's just what we need to know. Um, I think one question we do know is, are they going to get the full keys to Anthony Edwards? And I think that's just an obvious answer. Yes, you give it to him. Better than Cat all the way around. All the way around. He actually shows up on the other side of the ball. Better than Cat all the way around. And 
that's pretty much it as far as the questions, man. Just building on that, getting better personnel. A person I would love for them that oh my god, that sounds beautiful. A person I would love them for them to get it's like a monstrous hero guy just for the energy off the bench. Um, Malik Beasley, he has to be out of there. He has to get traded. Um, I like J uh, Jordan McLaughlin. I love Jaden McDaniels. I really wish he was a Cav. But other than that, man, they got a lot of stuff they got to figure out. And this free agency class is not really that deep. So, <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do. I really don't. But they got a bright future, though. Bright future. They weren't even supposed to be here in a lot of people's eyes. So, for them to be here and push the number two team in the whole league to six games... That's a lot to look at. So, other than that, man, that's it for this video. I will be back tomorrow with another video. But for right now, peace out. That's beautiful.